So, given that we have this opportunity here today, I'd like to take it to speak directly to middle America on behalf of the Libertarian Party, the Freedom Movement, and activists everywhere who, like me, and I assume like many of you, are motivated by a deep-seated sense of injustice. We aren't here to debate, and we aren't here to argue. We are coming to save America from this government because we care. We are here to apply our principles to make life better for everyone. If you hold your values dear, if you don't want to force them on anyone else, if you are sick and tired of politics, are you, if you are a human being with an independent mind who wants to be free, you are one of us. So why do we care about the Federal Reserve System? You might think that this is an issue about money, but it's not an issue about money. And I can very easily prove it. Where are you, Mike? Mike Heiss? Is Mike here? Mike, there's Mike. Mike, how long have we been organizing in the Fed rallies now? About a decade, right? I mean, Ron Paul, 2008 was, was the beginning of this. Almost 10 years. How many of us have gotten rich from doing this, Mike? Nobody. So, in a world run by central bankers, you get rich by kissing their butts, not by protesting them, right? So, most of us actually as activists end up going broke and, and burning out because we've dedicated our lives to causes that are greater than ourselves. And the thing about the Federal Reserve is that it's theft. And it's the most destructive form of theft the world has ever known because it empowers the most evil people in the world to do the most evil things that they can get away with. Here, of course, I mean war. As a veteran who has seen the horrors of war up close and personal, I can tell you that ending the possibility of war must be the priority for anyone who cares about the future of humanity. The thing about war is that people are already against it. How about that? You have to lie to people to get them to kill each other. And you have to steal from them without them noticing to get them to pay for it. And that's where the Federal Reserve comes in. Why tax people directly, which, you know, might let them know that they're financing murder, when instead you can just print the money. Every war is a banker's war based on lies that leads to poor men dying to line rich men's pockets, and it has to end. But I realized in my time with Iraq Veterans Against the War, it's not enough to be against one war or one policy. You have to be against militarism itself. And the founders of this country were right to oppose the very concept of a standing army. They knew that a, mil a militia was the only legitimate defense and that having a military actually makes you less safe. And I don't just mean in the sense of what I experienced in Iraq where we literally made enemies faster than we could kill them. I mean that we are lied to from the beginning about what war is when we are told that wars are fought between countries. It is not true. Wars are conducted by governments using violence to, end, to expand their protection rackets. And if you tell your government, please rule me, please tax my income, Please subject me to your monopoly protection services. Well, guess what? That makes you a really juicy target for another government that would come in and govern you. Kind of like you're being governed now, except I can't imagine it being a whole lot worse if another government had to start from scratch than what we're experiencing right now with the federal government of the United States. The American founders knew from their experiences in Europe that militaries kept under the pretense of protecting people ended up as tools of their enslavement. How enslaved and brainwashed must we be today that we thank veterans for serving bankers and politicians and war profiteers. The founders were right and they knew that the greatest defense of any people was a well-armed population that refuses to be governed by anyone. Yeah. Yeah. 
Not only is war a predictable consequence of allowing the existence of the central banking racket, but it has far-reaching consequences that touch every aspect of our lives. Why do the rich get richer while the poor get poorer? Central banks. Why are you struggling to get by while bankers just print all the money that they need? Central banks. Why can't you afford the medical care that you deserve? Central banks. Why are Americans more tired, broke, and busy than ever before? Central banks. Why does your job suck? You can blame that on the central banks too. It's not about money, it's not about stuff, it's about justice. It's about peace, it's about humanity, and it's about love. And the utmost manifestation of love and devotion to America is today, as it always has been, resistance of tyranny. Now, although some would point out that pride is a sin, we are proud to be Americans, not proud of the borders, or the wars, or the taxes, or the police state, and we are certainly not proud of this anti-American government. No, we are proud to be Americans because there is an Americanism that is bigger than the country and belongs to all of humanity, and that is the tradition of leading the world towards freedom and overthrowing empires. Yeah. One of the problems with fighting the system is that we fall for its false premise. We don't have to live under one government to be united as Americans. In fact, America is too good for this government. I would even go so far as to say that this government itself is un-American in its existence. First of all, there is nothing you can say that is more anti-American, more unlibertarian, and more anti-freedom than I want to be President of the United States. That is to say that my way is the best way, and I want to take over and force it on everyone else. America is about freedom not about coming up with a system and forcing it on people against their will. How about that? They've kept us divided and conquered for far too long because we have accepted this new national slavery while the alternative is staring us right in the face. As the founder said, it is our right and it is our duty to alter and abolish systems of government that do not serve us. The Libertarian Party and the movement behind it have evolved over the decades and we are ready to apply our principles to make policy that immediately improves life for everyone. We are no longer so concerned about ideology and philosophy. We are no longer an exclusive debate club. Because we have embraced localization of government, decentralization, respect for the right of self-determination of communities and of individuals, we are now a political force to be reckoned with. And we are evolving and we are welcoming all ethical, freedom-loving Americans regardless of your political backgrounds. If you're a liberal, a conservative, a religious zealot, a uh, socialist, a communist, a nudist, whatever, it doesn't matter. If you want your community to be organized a certain way, but you're willing to accept that other communities are going to be organized differently, and that if you're willing to accept that you can't force your preferences on other people, if you don't want your ideas to be forced on others in the name of government, then the Libertarian Party is your party too. By uniting people around freedom and mutual respect, we are bringing left and right and center together against the common enemy of big centralized governments. The new libertarian strategy is to stop debating the role of government and start creating practical policies of localization. We want to decentralize government down to the community level so that your, vo excuse me, your voice and your vote actually matter. 
so that you can truly vote with your feet if you need to. And you can create all new communities based on shared values, based on your needs, based on what you want. You want a community where guns aren't allowed? Well, I'm not gonna live there, but I'm not gonna force guns into your property, right? You want a community with no drugs? Okay, well, I'm probably not gonna come to your parties, but you know, that's okay. You can have your community with your preferences, that's fine. You want a community where gays aren't allowed? Okay, I'll stop short at mercilessly mocking your homophobia on the internet. I'm not going to force integrate your community with people that you don't want to associate with. So respect for the rights of self-determination is the future of freedom, and the Libertarian Party is making this an option for America right now. I'm on a 68 city national tour right now. It's called the Taxation is Theft Tour. <laughs> so you can find out where I'm gonna be next at thefreedomline.com slash calendar if you wanna check that out. We flew in uh, this morning from Lexington, flying back there tomorrow, and then we got an event in Columbus I'm really excited about tomorrow. And I, I travel the country in a rig that has my Freedom logo across it in really big letters. And so people stop me at gas stations all the time and they say, hey, what's, what's freedom? Oh, and I, I get to give away copies of my book called Freedom that I started you know, writing in jail because people care about this message. People who have read this book want it shared. If you want to get it, it's free in every digital format at thefreedomline.com. So people ask me, what's freedom? I said, oh, it's this book I wrote when I was in jail for civil disobedience. It's about how we create a more peaceful, productive, and harmonious society by dissolving government. And they go, hmm, sounds like a good idea. You would be shocked when you share this message as the anti-political message that it is. When you do it with love and compassion, you'll be blown away by how ready people are to hear this. They usually ask me next, so what are you doing about it? And you know what I tell them, right? I'm running for not president in 2020 on the platform of the peaceful, orderly, responsible dissolution of the entire United States federal government. Yeah. <laughs> and most of them go, hmm, yeah, sounds like a good first step. Imagine it. No more IRS. Yeah. No more NSA. Yeah. No more Federal Reserve System. Yeah. No more daylight saving time. Yeah. Why is that the best selling point of this platform? Jeez. Every time. In a free America, you will not be taxed to fund violence. In a free America, you will keep what you earn. In a free America, your dreams will never be crushed by regulations or bureaucracy. In a free America, your rights as a free, beautiful, independent human being will be respected. It's clear now. America is too good for this government. It's time to put the adults in charge. It's time to embrace a solution as big as the problem. It's time to fulfill the promise of our first American Revolution. And now we have the opportunity to take down the greatest empire the world has ever known right here. It is time for America to once again lead the world forward in freedom and finally free America. Thank you very much.